First of all, the most pressing question that everyone's been asking today is what is the Wi-Fi code? And it is Baylearn 15. And everybody has access, so feel free to uh, sign in. Welcome to Baylearn 2015. Um, I'm really happy to have the chance to introduce Andrew Ng. Um, Andrew is no stranger to many of you. Some of you may know him through his teaching the machine learning MOOC that led to the founding of Coursera. It's by far the uh, largest machine learning course in the world with almost a million enrollments, and it's really helped to grow our community. Has anybody out there taken that course? Yeah, good, okay. Um, in addition, in 2011, Andrew founded and led Google's deep learning project, at that time called Google Brain. Many of you know about this project, and if you use Google today, there's a high chance you're using some technology that that team worked on. Many people also credit Andrew with helping deep learning make the leap from academia to industry. And some of his early results were a source of inspiration for other companies to start their own teams. Today, Andrew is chief scientist at Baidu, and he's head of Baidu Research, which has offices in Sunnyvale and in Beijing. The Sunnyvale team, where I also work, is investing heavily in building supercomputers and deep learning infrastructure to make machine learning researchers really productive um, with a platform that lets them run experiments and iterate very quickly. Using this infrastructure, Andrew's team has gotten great results in speech recognition, image captioning, uh, medical diagnostics, and a lot of other areas. So please join me in welcoming Andrew to the podium. Um, thanks, Galisa. Let's turn this on. So I wanted to do uh, three things, which I'll do really quickly today. First is um, to welcome all of you to Baylearn. Um, uh, could you please pull up my laptop? Um, do you have my laptop, guys? Well, I have a big slide that says, welcome to Baylor. And so, oh, OK, all right. I didn't want you to miss that. <laughs> so on behalf of the organizing committee, I want to all welcome all of you to Baylor. And um, it's very exciting to, to, to be here today. I want to share with you some key statistics. Um, when we opened our registration for Baylor, and it sold out in three hours. I guess it's free, but you know, it sold out in three hours with 766 registrations, of which unfortunately were therefore only able to get 250 into the site with uh, over 500 waitlisted. And so we had to set up a, um, we wound up setting up an overflow site at the uh, Baidu office in Sunnyvale, um, several miles from here. So a number of people are actually there at the overflow site. I want to say hi to all of you watching this on live streaming. Um, so I think you know, clearly there's a lot of excitement in machine learning. None of us expected Baylearn to, to fill up quite this quickly. Oh, and um, I was talking to my wife last night, and she reminded me that when, I think at the last Taylor Swift concert, Taylor Swift sold out in two hours. So we're not quite as popular, but you know, close. Um, so there's a lot of excitement about machine learning, and this community, Baylearn, has grown quickly. And um, uh, machine learning isn't just, there isn't a sense of excitement just in um, the tech world. Uh, earlier this morning at 5.30 AM, I was on a presentation to Washington, DC about the impact of machine learning and AI on, 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 on our country more broadly as well. So often I think about, you know, why is machine learning taking off now, right? We in the community, we've all worked on it for a long, many of us have worked on it for a long time. Why now? Why, why is, you know, tech and Washington, DC and governments paying, why, why is machine learning taking off? I kind of have one, and, and I think um, I have one answer to that that I'll, that I'll share with you in a second. Um, and I think one of the things I'm excited about today is I think we're a very exciting lineup of many speakers and posters. Um, and especially excited to hear shortly, you know, Jan LeCun's talk, uh, old friend uh, Trevor Darrell's keynote, uh, uh, Jan, Trevor, and Jeff Dean. Uh, Jeff was one of the first people I recruited uh, to the Google Brain team. We're excited, looking forward to all three of the keynotes as well as the other speakers and the uh, posters we have today. Um, and uh, uh, and uh, all the keynotes, by the way, are about uh, deep learning, um, I think. Um, and I want to share with you as well one framing that I use when I think about all this progress in machine learning and a lot of the ideas that we're all here about today that some of you will be able to go home and, and, and implement like tomorrow you know, to make your systems better. So what's really happening? And I have a very simple answer. I think it's all about scale. Right? And, and this is sort of maybe not always a popular answer. 
Um, but I think that what's happened in the last several years is the scale of computation, the scale of data, that's been the platform that's driving a lot of the um, clever algorithms that we're gonna hear about today. And it's not just about scale, it's about the clever algorithms and the mathematical insights and the theory as well. But I think that you know, if you were to run PCA on what's happening, right, the first principal component is, is, is clearly scale, and that is a platform that's driving a lot of the research progress that you hear about today. So when I listen to talks on machine learning, this is one thing I tend to keep in mind. This is all about scale. And you know, the supervised learning, unsupervised learning, a lot of these ideas are now possible because of this. Um, <clears throat> I want to share with you also um, how I tend to think about progress in uh, machine learning research as well as, as, as products, which is that you know, machine learning today is often a very empirical process, and this is true for basic research as well as for products, as for engineering product. But many of you will have ideas, you know, ideas for a neural network architecture or something. Uh, you have to express your ideas in code, you then get to run an experiment, and the result of the experiments then um, help you come up with, you know, refine your ideas. And so I think a lot of um, machine learning progress today is driven by um, having good platforms to express your ideas in code, um, having good scalable uh, data and scalable compute hardware uh, to run your experiments quickly so, to, so your job finishes in a day rather than in a month. Um, as well as, I guess, I spend a lot of time thinking about employee development to help teams have the best ideas. Um, and so I think in, in, in my work, you know, now at Baidu as well as um, other organizations I've led, I've actually tended to spend a lot of time thinking about how to build the platforms, the software and the hardware platforms to enable researchers, to enable you know, people like you to be very productive in expressing your ideas in code and in terms of uh, running experiments quickly. So you can go around this cycle quickly and have great ideas and bring them to fruition. Um, you know, I think that over the past several years, we've seen server scaling, right? We've all seen tons of uh, Moore's Law curves like these, and today at Baidu, our you know, typical job, a right? deep learning job, uh, not, not a huge one, like a typical one, maybe runs at 100 teraflops. Um, I'm quite proud that Baidu was the first company, as far as I know, to build a, a GPU cluster and a GPU platform for, for really scaling up deep learning, uh, but now I think everyone does this. One other thing that I want to share with you is another exciting trend is, is a similar Moore's Law scaling of um, smartphones. Uh, only the numbers on the vertical axis are you know, maybe a thousand times smaller. Um, and there was one, one, one last thing I wanted to share with you, uh, all of you today, and this is something I'm actually announcing for the very first time in, 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 in the United States, in the world, um, which is that um, we've been doing a lot of work, uh, research work, on um, how to get deep learning to run on smartphones, to run on these tiny little processes. And uh, several weeks ago, one of our engineers, taking our you know, mobile deep learning engine, decided to run a, um, to build a fun application. And so for those of you that have iPhones, let me invite you to now just take a minute. I'd love for as many of you, you know, that want to try it out to get to try it out yourself. So for those of you that have iPhones, go to the iPhone App Store and search for Face U. Uh, uh, let's give you, a, give you a minute to download it yourself, and then, and then you can try it out as well. You know what, let me, so could you, could you put up my cell phone on the screen? Oh, right. Um, all right, so let me show you a demo of this app. And this is just a fun thing that our engineers took a few weeks to throw together to demonstrate um, uh, deep learning running in real time on a, on a cell phone CPU. We're not even using a GPU in this case. But, um, and we released this in the spirit of Halloween. So it's doing a, oh, excuse me. Um, so it's doing a um, real time detection of my face and tracking large number of key points on my face in order to um, map other <laughs> things onto it. And, uh, you know, one of the, because it was Halloween, I guess my team put a lot of uh, somewhat scary pictures onto this. 
Uh, so we wanted to release it in the U.S. in the spirit of, uh, well, that was pretty scary. And this was approved on the iPhone, Apple App Store, literally 30 minutes. Well, it's weird when you hear someone like this giving a talk, isn't it? Uh, this was literally approved on the iPhone App Store 30 minutes ago. Uh, and so I got frantic text messages saying, show them the latest version. You, you are the first people in the world that we're showing the English version to. Um, one of the fun things is you can also take pictures of your friends. And, uh, uh, you know, so this is... Um, uh, this is my wife. Uh, I can use this to make fun of her. Um, yeah. And earlier on stage, um, I took a picture of Jan. So, you know, I'm Jan LeCun. I work on Confidence. Um, and, and this is Sammy Venjo, right? And, and, <laughs> so thanks, Jan, Sammy, for doing such good sports. And, you know, just to say a little bit, I hope you play with it, have fun with it. It's, it's not as serious as an entertainment thing. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the challenge to something like that is um, at Baidu, we build a lot of supercomputers to train deep learning systems. And the challenge is really taking a giant deep learning model, I mean, over 100 megs in our case, and finding a way to compress it to a small enough binary that you can download it onto your cell phone. None of you want to install 100 megabyte, 150 megabyte binary on your cell phones, um, as well as getting it to run you know, 25 frames per second on, on, a, on a cell phone CPU in our case. So just to finish up, um, I'm looking forward to hearing an exciting lineup of uh, speakers today. And I think a lot of our progress in this field, right, we have to be acknowledged, is driven by scale uh, of um, servers, which has taken off, allowing us to do great things in the cloud. Also, scale of um, our mobile phones, which is now letting us do exciting things on our mobile phones. And of course, I think the scale is a platform that enables all of the clever, a lot of the clever algorithmic insights that, that we'll see today. Um, and finally, I want to uh, thank the um, organizing committee, uh, Sammy Benjo, Jochen uh, Candela, uh, Jean-Francis Pehrman, uh, Axel Posner, Mohak Shah, as well as the um, program committee, Olivier Chappelle, uh, Adam Coates, uh, Natalie Hodens Gados, Umesh Krupp, and Roma Rosales for um, putting this conference together. So with that, uh, welcome again. I hope you have fun with the FaceU app, and uh, thank you. <laughs>